Hello, and welcome to Beta Bay, where we feature speakers from all over the Bay Area who are members of Toastmasters International. Today, we have two speakers, followed by each by their evaluators. Here to give his first speech is Mr. Ken Mann, whose objective of this presentation is to inspire and be compelling. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ken Mann. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guest. In Brooklyn, New York, CHUSH is a school that is dedicated to children with learning disabilities. Some of the children remain at CHUSH their entire school career, while others are often able to move to conventional schools. At a fundraising dinner, a father of one of the CHUSH children gave a speech that everyone at the event will always remember. He started off his speech after extolling the staff and the school. He said, where is the perfection in my son Shia? Everything God does is done with perfection. But my son Shia can't do everything that other children can do. He can't do facts and figures like other children. Where is God's perfection? The audience was shocked. Pained by the father's anguish. Stilled by the piercing query. I believe the father said that when God brings a child like this into the world, that the perfection that he seeks is from how the world interacts with this child. He then went on to tell this story. One day, Shia and his father were walking in a park. And they came up along some boys that Shia knew that were playing baseball. Shia looked up at his father and he said, Dad, do you think they would let me play? His father knew that Shia would probably not be athletic enough to play and that the boys probably wouldn't want him on their team. However, the father understood that if they would let Shia play, that this would be very meaningful for Shia and give him a sense of belonging. So the father approached one of the boys on the baseball field. And he asked the boy, do you think my son Shia could play? The boy looked back at his teammates for help. And when he received none, he took matters into his own hands. He said, well, we're in the eighth inning. We're down by six points. I guess he can play. And in fact, in the ninth inning, we'll try to get him up the bat. The father was excited. And Shia smiled broadly. So they gave Shia a glove, and they sent him off into short center field. And in the eighth inning, the team scored a few more runs. Now they were down by three points. In the ninth inning, they scored another run. They were in the bottom of the ninth. There were two outs. The bases were loaded. And it was Shia's turn to get up the bat. No one expected that Shia was going to be able to swing a bat, much less hit it, because he had never swung a bat before. Surprisingly, the team let Shia get up to home plate and pick up a bat. He stood there, and the pitcher walked in closely. And he threw a soft ball to home plate. And Shia swung clumsily and missed the ball. So one of the boys from the dugout came running out. And he stood behind Shia and helped Shia hold the bat. And the pitcher walked in a little bit more closely. And he threw another soft ball towards home plate. And the teammate and Shia together, holding the bat, swung and hit the ball, a slow grounder straight to the pitcher. The pitcher could have easily picked up the ball and thrown Shia out at first base. But instead, he took the ball 
and he threw it way over the first baseman's head. Everybody started screaming, run to first, Shia, run to first, run to first. And Shia was running first. The first time he's ever run to the base. He had a smile on his face. By this time, the right outfielder had picked up the ball, and he could have easily thrown Shia out at second base. But he knew what the intentions of the pitcher was. So he took the ball, and he threw it high over third base. And everybody was screaming, run to second, Shia, run to second. And as Shia reached second base, the shortstop from the opposing team grabbed Shia and turned him in the direction of third base and said, run to third, Shia, run to third. And Shia was running to third base. And as he rounded third base, the entire team from both teams was running behind Shia, running. And as he reached home plate, they all picked him up held him on their shoulders, and made him the hero of the team. His father, standing at the banquet, with tears softly running down his face, said to the audience, those 18 boys reached the level of God's perfection. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Ken, for that very inspirational speech. Thank you. Say, what, what club are you from, and how long have you been a Toastmaster? I'm with Cisco Speaks, uh, which is held over in uh, Building P off of uh, Tasman and Rio Robles. Mm -hmm. And I've been uh, with the club for about nine years. Nine years, wow. Yeah. And have you ever had a shy moment in your life? Uh, yeah, I've, I've had a couple of those moments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, inspirational things, you know, that happened to me personally. Yeah. Okay, okay. And what, what, what would you say is your most memorable time at Toastmasters? Uh, the most memorable time at Toastmasters, and it's a re repetitive time at Toastmasters, I, I love going back and seeing new members come into the club. And in the beginning, you know, they, they're, they're nervous and they're afraid and scared to speak. And then after six months, nine months, or a year, you see their, their, their involvement in terms of their speaking capabilities. And I was at one club one day, and this gentleman was giving a speech. His name's Kevin Moe. And he was giving, I think, his 10th speech in the first manual. And one of the guys sitting next to me, after his speech was done, I looked over him. I said, that's why I keep coming to Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That was very great. And, and that's... At Toastmasters, we always welcome our, our visitors who attend a club. And you can always visit d4tm.org to find a club near you. Ken just delivered a very fabulous and inspirational speech. And right now, we're going to see how he did who, who, and who will be evaluating Ken. Who other, that to, who other person to evaluate Ken's presentation than the winner of, yet, of Saturday's district evaluation contest, second place winner of the district evaluation contest. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Cynthia Beck. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, and especially Ken. Your task today was to inspire us, and you used all of your great Toastmaster skills. It was a well-written story. It was well-organized. It had a wonderful opening. You told us about a school for disabled children. You told the story of Shia's father and his speech. And then you told us this wonderful story of how Shia was lifted up by the perfect boys around, being the imperfect child. You used fabulous gestures. You're really a master at gesturing. I really appreciated how you moved from one character to another. But I will say that towards the end, during the baseball game, the gestures got a little distracting because it seemed like you were acting out almost every verb. And I think you have great enough speech skills that you could have backed off from the gestures a little bit and really told the story. You use great pauses. You're, you're a masterful pause. Lots of people speak very fast, but you did that really well. This is a wonderful story of how People can be selfless in competition. 
and competition is usually very difficult for young people. And so I really felt the joy of the teams pouring out and holding Shia up. You really inspired me with the story. And what I would have liked to cap it off, to be the icing, is for you to tell me how I could be in, inspired like that, how I can in my day-to-day -day life be like those boys who were generous to Shia. How do I bring that moment into the workplace? How do I bring that moment into my community? How do I bring that moment into Toastmasters? So that would have been really something, and also to really add your take on it, because this was the father's story. And I want to know what you thought about it, or how it moved you. But Ken, you're a master Toastmaster. You're not a beginner. And so it's really difficult. I'm nitpicking here, because that was a well-delivered and masterful speech. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. We are just halfway through the show, and right now we're going to take some time to take a break and watch a segment of an interview of the 2005 world champion Toastmaster, Mr. Lance Miller. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching at home, please sit back and enjoy this segment. I'm Lance Miller. I'm the 2005 world champion in public speaking with Toastmasters International. When I won my world championship speech, it was on the concept of validating what's right and good in people and you know look we're all human we're in inherently flawed we're imperfect it doesn't take any special skill or talent to find an imperfection in another person can you find what's good in them and bring that out some of the toughest times we have in our life give us the most important lessons that we can carry forward but we can't carry it forward as baggage we have to carry it forward as a lesson and by communicating it and refining it and sharing with others we lose the baggage we gain the lesson. The process of going through Toastmasters helped me find the value in my life and it wasn't until then that I was really able to see the value in other people and the experiences that they had and there are so many incredible inspirational moments on a day-to-day -day basis that are sitting right in front of us but most of us don't even see them. We're so preoccupied with our problems or our, where we're trying to go. We're not looking at the value and the beauty of what's happening right in front of us and that's one of the big shifts I had by looking for speech topics and being in Toastmasters was appreciating the moment and the lesson of the moment that I could then refine and bring to other people. If you're communicating, you're leading. People are going to listen to you. It's going to affect their life either on a positive or negative basis and it's going to give some direction to it and there's a responsibility that comes with that and its ability to stand there and be able to touch the heart and change the mind and make a better world. I mean, if you're going to go learn tennis or golf, you can go out and practice that, and then you're going to play a tournament, you want to make sure that your skills are honed up for the tournament. But well, there's the tournament of life that we get up every morning and walk out the front door to go do. When do we get an opportunity to practice those skills so that we can continue to excel, but we don't make the mistakes in the tournament, which is on the job, in the community. Toastmasters gives us that environment where we work on our leadership skills, we work on our communication skills, we make mistakes, we screw up, we fail, we find our weaknesses, we, we strengthen those weaknesses, we identify our strengths, we know there are strengths, so when we go out in the world, we can actually lead and speak. I'd always had a passion for speaking, but I never really knew if I was doing it right or not. And when I came into Toastmasters, I saw the component parts of how all, all these things work, and with that, as I started to learn those, it started to affect other areas of my life in a very positive and dramatic way. And so I have found Toastmasters just to be a great, great organization and a great program to continually develop your communication and leadership skills so that you have those skills honed when you go out in life to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. Hello, and welcome back. Our next speaker here is Henry Miller. And today he's going to present to us a humorous story. He's going to close his speech emphasizing on the main point and he'll do, he, his objective is to deliver stories smoothly and effectively. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mr. Henry Miller.
Love and marriage, according to that song, goes together like a horse and carriage. But sadly, sometimes the music does not even last as long as the honeymoon. And before both spouses start calling each other those ugly names, fitting only for that part of the horse that always faces the carriage. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster and my fellow Toastmasters, married, single, almost married. <laughs> now, I don't mean to pry into anyone's personal business, but tell me, in your relationship or marriage, who is the horse? And who is the carriage? And how many of you believe that communication and leadership will lead to a successful marriage? And does it matter if you first fall in love and then get married? Well, these are just a few of the questions I hope to address with you today as we take a serious look at this institution without bars we call marriage. Now in some cultures, first you fall in love and then you get married. While in others, you get married and you have all the time in the world to fall in love. And ever since the beginning of time, there has always been this debate over which one works better or which one should come first. Do you know? I don't. You see, my question has always been, how do you know when you are in love? Some say it's a feeling you feel for about seven years, and then you start to itch. <laughs> Others say it's something you have to say like a mantra, over and over, until you convince yourself. And then there's grandma, who would always say, Oh, it's just something you did with that chick. Just get over it. Now, in case you're wondering, yes, today I am happily married. But I, by no means I am an expert on the subject. No, I leave that for the true professionals, like my pastor, who once said, you know, marriage sometimes comes with three rings. First, you go out and you get that big, nice diamond ring, and she's all happy. And then a little while later, you start waking up at the same time in the morning, doing the same thing, making the same jokes, no variety, no spice. You're giving her the ball ring. <laughs> and you, it's guaranteed, <laughs> very soon after, you're going to be getting the supper ring. And that's when most married people make a rookie mistake. They run out and find a marriage counselor. Now, I have nothing against marriage counselors. But what I have discovered is many of them have never been married, but they know everything about marriage, or have been married quite a few times, <laughs> and still trying to figure it out. And they are going to tell you two things for the book or box you're going to pay when you visit them. They're going to tell you that you are not communicating with each other and whomever is wearing the pants is not leading. Now you tell me, where in the world can you find an organization that teaches communication and leadership for under $75 a year. Toastmasters. Oh, it's our brand. So I urge each and every one of you to start getting out there and sharing the message with your friends, your exes. And I want you to give them this guarantee that if they find a Toastmasters club, they will enjoy the experience. And they will never, ever have another argument in their household. 
they will just have tabletop. <laughs> and here's a tip to you. Make sure they all observe that minute of silence between each speaker. And you will find that love and marriage does go together like a horse and carriage. And that you can't have one. No, you can't have one. No, 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 no. You can't have one without the other. And I think that my work here is done. If you promise me that you are going to go out and share that message with the audience and make it known that Toastmasters can also help cure marriages. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Miller. Sir. Question. This is like the chicken or the egg question. What came first, chicken or the egg? What comes first, love or marriage? Oh, well, the chicken and the egg question, I can answer that better. <laughs> because at your chicken, you have it for lunch. Egg, for breakfast. So the egg always came first. Okay. <laughs> that works. <laughs> How long have you been a Toastmaster, sir? And what club are you with? I've been a Toastmaster. I only count in five. So let's stop it. Let's go by up, up for 15, over 15 years. Over 15 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. and I'm in five clubs right now. Five clubs? Uh, yes. Wow, wow. Are they all far from each other? Or are they practically uh, close? Some are in Santa Cruz, and some are on this side. OK. And what was your most memorable moment you've had as a Toastmaster? Oh, memorable moments. Serving as the district governor 2009-2010. Mm. Uh, many, many moments. Mm. Well, <laughs> good, <laughs> bad. And ugly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we, we want to hear the ugly parts, oh, but, no. but, but for another episode. I have a scrapbook. <laughs> okay, that will be your visual aid speech. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. Thank and you very much. Thank you for that very wonderful speech. Thank you. As Mr. Henry Miller said, love and marriage go together like a horse and carriage. And with every Toastmaster speech, you need an evaluator because, after all, what's a Toastmaster speech without one, without an evaluator? You can't have one without the other, right? Well, here to evaluate Mr. Henry Miller's speech will be his evaluator, Mr. Ben Cardenas. Hello, Ben. Thank you. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, guests, and our viewers at home. Wow, Henry, what a terrific speech. A question for the ages. What came first, the horse or the carriage? What an incredible question to pose in comparison to love and marriage. That age-old question, what came first, love or marriage or marriage and love? That's a debate that's been going on for centuries, and I don't know that one that will be resolved. I love the opening and the way that you presented this speech to us, presented the opening and the topic. Henry has a marvelous, warm, rich voice with that Caribbean lilt that just sucks you in and makes you want to listen. His voice is very rhythmic and very enticing to the ear. So as you told your story, very humorous story, I still can't figure out where I am. Am I the horse or am I the carriage? The message that you are trying to communicate to us, that communication is, and is very important in a marriage. Does a marriage counselor help when perhaps they don't have any experience, have never been married, or have had multiple marriages? Terrific question. That's a great question to ask a marriage counselor if you ever need one. However, Henry's antidote for a poor marriage is communication. I find that the story of marriage and continuing a healthy marriage 
and using Toastmasters as a tool was an interesting twist in order to bring in what wonderful qualities and resources Toastmasters brings to individual as well as into marriage. There are definitely benefits to being a good communicator, certainly in business, your personal life, and marriage. A terrific speech, wonderful. I've focused on some of the benefits and, and attributes of, of your speech being humorous. You tied in the beginning and the end. I just have a couple of suggestions. I think it would have been a little bit more consistent if you brought the topic or the, the message of communication earlier, in, earlier on in the speech. If you had said, I will be able to show you, we're going to talk about how communication helps, and then it would tie in later on with bringing in Toastmasters. The other uh, suggestion that I might have is something that I've picked up at one of the conferences at Patricia Fripp uh, Delivery, and one of them is emphasizing and drawing out certain words. So for example, when you told the story of the three rings, first is the diamond ring, and then it becomes boring, and then extending out the suffering. It would have drawn it out a little bit more and had a little bit more emphasis. I lost a little bit in that. However, what a terrific speech on point with a terrific message and a great reason for people to continue to belong to Toastmasters as well as for, to attract new members to Toastmasters as well. Thank you for a wonderful speech, Henry. Thank you. Well, if you've, if you've enjoyed what you've seen already, be sure to visit d4, www.d4tm.org.